Welcome to the House of Games. Joining me, four famous names, rounds are played and points are scored. This trophy, that's their scant reward. I ask questions, they give answers. Come on, let's meet this week's chancers. They are... Oh, I didn't think I'd get through that. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be the whole show, by the yeah, way. I just, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I need a little rest. Yeah. Um, playing this week is Glenn Moore. Hello. Michael Burke. Hi. Tanya Moore. Hi. And Kate Humble. Hello, everybody. I just thought I'd do a poem to start with, Glenn. It's nice. Listen, and all I've been thinking for the two seconds before you came on air is, is getting it in the right order. Yeah. What a win for you yesterday, a huge win. Oh, thanks. I'm that's... worried that's all my energy gone. Yeah, I, th I think the others are hoping that's all your energy gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you played last time, you played with Sean Williamson, which is why you didn't win. It's redemption week, mm. but now you are redeemed. I like... feel redeemed. I thought I was just going to vanish like Patrick Swayze at the end of Ghost. But like, <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I haven't seen Ghost. Now you told me you <laughs> oh, yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you are Sorry, you haven't had enough time. You are redeemed like a Boots voucher. Michael, <laughs> redemption week. Redemption week. A big so, win yesterday. He was impressive, wasn't he? He was really impressive. He streaked, <laughs> if I can use that word, ahead. Yes. He's and stayed ahead. ahead. In Didn't... fact, I feel daunted. I feel, you know, a long way to go. Got him. Got him. Yeah, exactly. Wanted. You're inside his head. Rattled. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Got <laughs> burned. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the weekly leaderboard, Tanya, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Glenn is at the top of it, of course. Currently, you find yourself in fourth, but um, you've worked with Glenn before on the stand-up circuit. Yeah. We can we can get to him, right? I can get to Glenn. We're Moors. I know. I know what to do. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You are Glenn. I think you're scared. I yeah. know. I was going to say, I think you've got Burke, but I think Tanya's got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kate, played well yesterday. Nothing we could do about Glenn yesterday. No. Very impressive. No, I just ignored him. Do you, you know what? This is a good thing to do with Glenn. In yeah. the end, I still need you to be present. Oh, yeah, no, no, I will be. be. Yeah, 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 exactly. Don't actually disappear like Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Kate, should we take a look at the, uh, the prizes for today? Yes. Glenn won please. a fondue set yesterday. Yeah. I would love to give away prizes to all of you this week. We have today Ooh. the... <laughs> that was, was that disappointment or awe? Is there a word that means disappointment and awe at the same uh, time? No, it's just, the, <laughs> it's, it's just the general love of a thermos. Oh, exactly. Well, we do have a thermos, we have a yo-yo, we have a watering can, we have a cool box and we have a dartboard. Kate, what do you think you go for? Oh, it's the thermos, every time. Tanya? Watering can, I'm staying in the plant bag. Watering can, staying in the plant bag. Michael, you're staying in the plant no, bag? the choice, the choice. <laughs> The yo-yo. I think there are a million things you could do with the yo-yo, but <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling to get beyond about three. <laughs> <laughs> Same amount of billionaires, babes. Same yeah, 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 billionaires. exactly. <laughs> but we'll say yo-yo, Glenn. I think '90s toys as well. I think I'm going to go yo-yo in the hope of tomorrow winning really? the Richard Osman Tamagotchi. Wow, the Richard Osman Tamagotchi. I must must check on him. <laughs> um, you'll go for yo-yo as well. A lot of yo-yo love going on. Shall we play Tuesday's House of Games? Sure. So it's redemption week. We know that four people coming back to, uh, to see if they can win. Glenn did it yesterday. Can someone else do it today? Let's play our first round, shall we? Correction <laughs> centre. Glenn, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to give you a sentence which is incorrect. Mm -hmm. You need to change one word and you'll make it correct. OK. OK? Here is your sentence. Released in 1979, Genie in a Bottle was the first UK number one single for the police. Uh, the word Genie is wrong and it should be Message. Oh, that's you see, you're on the radio every morning, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so change Genie to Message. Absolutely right. <laughs> message in a Bottle. Michael, I have an incorrect statement for you. Mm. And you change one word and make it correct. Approximately 147 million ounces of gold are stored at Fort Boyard, the home of the United States Bullion Depository. Um, it's not Fort Boyard, it's Fort Knox. Fort Knox, yeah. You don't muck about with Michael Burke. <laughs> Change Boyard to Knox is absolutely right. Fort Boyard, I think, is a, a French game show, mm. which is why our question setters put it in, because they love a French game show, mm. you know? Tanya, yeah. I have an incorrect statement for you, I'm afraid. Can you change one word and make it correct? In a film series that has revitalised his career, Keanu Reeves plays John McEnroe, a ruthless, relentless hitman who comes out of retirement to terrorise the criminal underworld. Oh, I'm going to go McEnroe. Going to change McEnroe to...? Yeah, to the correct answer. Which is...? Smith. You're going to change McEnroe to Smith? It I don't incorrect, know. I'm afraid. Anyone want to buzz in? Glenn buzzes in. Uh, I'll change McEnroe to Wick. Wick. Change McEnroe to Wick. Ah. The John Wick movies. Absolutely. Kate, I have an incorrect statement for you. Can you change one word, please? 
France and the UK were founder members of the Six Nations in 1945, but Switzerland didn't join until 2002. I think it is, it shouldn't be Switzerland, it should be Italy. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. He's I'm already afraid. reaching. He's already then reaching. Argentina is also incorrect, I'm afraid. Anyone at home? Michael Burke is going for it. Change six to United. So change six to United. Absolutely right. Very well done. And again, the uh, the question set is absolutely doing a number on Kate and Glenn there. Oh, yeah. by, really uh, by yeah. taking them down the Six Nations route. Yeah. yeah. Our next question goes to Glenn. Mm -hmm. Glenn. According to legend, Francis Drake insisted on finishing a slanging match in Plymouth before tackling the Spanish Armada. I think it's going to be either slanging or Plymouth. As, as so often in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I mean, um, I, I'm really worried it's going to be something obvious like, oh, it's Francis Drake's wrong or Spanish Armada's wrong. Uh, but I'm going to change slanging to wrestling. Change slanging to wrestling? It's incorrect, I'm afraid. Thinking. Anyone want to put in? Michael Burke. Bowls. Slanging for bowls. Slanging for bowls. Bowls match in Plymouth. No. Uh, absolutely. Did you not do that at school? That was a compulsory when we were at school, wasn't no. it? Yeah. So Francis Drake playing bowls. No, we just played Conkers before tackling the Spanish Armada. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, health and safety you can't, can't even play <laughs> Conkers anymore, can you? <laughs> Michael, I have a, a statement for you. Known for his romantic poetry and flamboyancy, Lord Farquhar was famously <laughs> described as mad, bad and dangerous to know. Uh, it was Lord Byron, not uh, Lord Farquhar. Who's Farquhar? Sure well, of course, it is antagonist from Shrek. Shrek. The antagonist from Shrek. <laughs> wow. You're yeah, not going to get a bonus. You really reached for that. For that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, was, I would have accepted he's from Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's absolutely right to change uh, Farquhar, who was the antagonist from Shrek, to Byron. Absolutely. Tanya, a statement for you. Can you make this correct? In the Enid Blyton story, Five Run Away Together, Julian prepares a breakfast of ham with two bottles of Belgian beer. Oh, ham to eggs. Change ham to eggs? Yeah. It's incorrect. We have a buzzer race. Glenn wins Buzz the buzzer oh. race. Belgian for ginger. Yeah. Belgian for ginger. Oh. Ginger beer. Lashings of ginger Lashings beer. Lashings of ginger beer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Kate, I have a statement for you, which is incorrect. OK. Can you finish the round with a point here? St Andrews can be seen in the highest grossing films of both 1964 and 1965. Oh, I have no idea. Kate, you have absolutely got this. What can we change? There's, what makes no sense there whatsoever? Um, OK, no, I know, I know, I know. It's going to take away Saint and put Julie. Take away Saint and put Julie? Oh, you've broken Michael and Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely right. Julie Andrews. Kate, lovely. Enter the round. Let's take a look at our leaderboard, shall we? First leaderboard of Tuesday's House of Games. Tanya, yet to get off the mark, traditionally. Uh, we like to see Kate, you have one. Glenn, you have three. Michael Burke, early leader with four points. Come on, Michael. That is our leaderboard. Shall we play a pairs game? Our pairs game today is going to be. All right, Hard Boschmann's Haus de Spiel. Tanya, you are in fourth. Would you like to choose your partner for this round? I'm going to go Kate for gonna this round. going to stay with round. Kate. So right. Tanya and Kate are a team. Michael and Glenn, you're a team. Now, in this round, all of the questions and indeed all the answers are in foreign languages. <laughs> OK, um, here are your categories. Astronomy, Fernsehen, Ifrotia, Predatori Oceanici, La Biblia, Geography. Gentlemen, which of those do you figure might be a language you're good at or a subject you're good at? Uh, Fernsehen, potentially. I think that's TV shows. Uh, well, you could do yeah. TV shows and but I, what, what, and would I you, would couldn't. You like, would you like to do geography then? We could do that. And let's do that. Okay. I, feel confident you'd, I feel confident that you'd do well. Well... So let's I, do that. OK. It's very cocky you think that's geography. It's in a foreign language, so... Oh, no. <laughs> Geographia is Swedish for geography. Hooray! Okay. I get to read <laughs> Swedish. So your question will be in Swedish, your answer will as well. Your question is this. Par vilken medel hasso liga vulkanen etna is your question. And your answer is one of these three. Chupen, Corfu, Sicilian. 
So what do we think the question is, and then what do we think the well, answer is? Well, the question is, is which island, I imagine, which island, uh, uh, on which island is the, uh, the volcano uh, oh, Etna? I, keep, I forget you're an ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is Sicilian. Yes. Michael was briefly the fifth member of ABBA when they were called MABBA. <laughs> <laughs> so he thinks, yeah, Vulcan and Etna is doing some heavy yeah, lifting there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so you think it's on Sicily, mm -hmm, so Sicilian yeah. we're going forward. Do you agree with that at home? That seems, that seems about right, doesn't it? Is Sicilian the answer? <laughs> it is, very well done. And the question, absolutely right, on which old oh, Mediterranean island yep, mm. is the volcano Mount Etna? It was on Sicily, Cyprus and Corfu, the other options there. Tanya and Kate, which category would you like? Do you have a... F I mean, if Fern Johnson is TV, yeah. then that's better. However, we don't know, and I feel like Glenn could be throwing us in the bin. Might be able to do number four. Um, I think four or, or five. You, four or five. You choose. It's your round. Let's go four. OK. Let's we're going... go four. So we're going to go for Predatori Ocinici, which is Italian for ocean predators. <laughs> uh, here's your question. Quale spezie di scalo prende il nome dalla strizze verticale che ha di piccolo? Sorry, Italy. And your possible answers are... Squalo tigre. Grande squalo bianco. Squalo martello. Mm. What are we thinking? I'm getting which species... Of shark... Yeah. ...takes its name... From... from the vertical stripes. I'm, I'm going to try, and there's something about being small, uh, I'm going to try for tiger shark. And we think of stripes as well. Squalo, yeah. 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 Squalo yeah. tigre, yeah. yeah. Shark, wouldn't it? Um, what do you think at home on this one? Do you agree, disagree? Is squalo tigre the correct answer? <laughs> it is. Well done. Yay! Yay. Let's, let's take a look at that question. Beat those boys. Yeah. Uh, which species of shark is named for the vertical stripes it has as an infant? So that was piccolo. Oh, I was thinking that was piccolo. piccolo. Yeah. I was thinking, is that nose or something? Okay. But, uh, okay. Piccolo, of course, means small, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, in Italian. So infant tiger shark, great white shark, and hammerhead shark were the other two. Gentlemen, you have another category to choose. What are we thinking? Should we go ferns end this time? Yes, let's do ferns end. Is there ferns end? Which is German for television. Mm. Yeah, absolutely right, Glenn. Die zwei Hauptfiguren in der Sitcom Karsche arbeiten in welcher Art von Einrichtung? Your possible answers are Supermarkt, Schule, Sportzentrum. Uh, basically, the two lead figures in the yeah, Sitcom Karsche work in which, which environment? Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch Peter Kay's car share, and now I regret it. <gasps> it was so good. Not as much as I do. Uh... I think... I remember they had matching... vaguely matching uniforms. Right. I'm worried it's going to be sports centre, but I think supermarket. Right. Well, um, I'll go with you. Yeah, we'll go with... we'll go with supermarket. What a please. team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you saying stuff, and Michael go, OK, sure. Yeah. Let's go with you. So you think supermarket? You think it's Peter Kay's car share? Where do they both work? Is the answer supermarket? It is. We're three out of three in this round. Very well done. Oh, oh, my hero. And you're absolutely right. The two main characters in the sitcom car share work in what type of establishment? Very nicely translated. Tanya and Kate, final question in this round. What would you like to go for? Astronomy or it looks like the Bible. It does. Or the Idrotir. What do you think? I think we'll be able to work it out, whatever comes. We'll do able... you? Yeah, I think we'll be fine. OK, you choose. No, I, I did the last one. I think if we lose this one, it should be on your head. OK, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. What let's are we going go for? astronomy. Let's do are we it. going to go for astronomy? We're going okay. astronomy. It is French for astronomy. Let's do it. Here is your question. Quelle planète de notre système solaire est le troisième à partir du soleil? OK, so... Planet. La Terre. Mercure ou Saturn. OK. So, which planet in our solar system is the third furthest from the sun? Oh. I think. I like that. And we've got Earth, Mercury or Saturn. My gut feeling is it's Mercury. Let's go Mercury. We're going to go Mercury? Yeah. We're going to go Mercury. OK, what do you think at home? Do you go Mercury? Is Mercury the correct answer? It is not, I'm afraid. Let's <gasps> take a look at what the question oh my was. God, you're going to be 
Which planet of our solar system is third from, from the, the sun? sun? We're sitting there There's right about now. It's oh, Earth it we were are? looking for, La Terre. Well done if you said that at home. It's the end of that round. Let's take a look at the scores. Tanya, you have one point. Kate, you got two. Glenn has got five. Still out in the lead with six. It is Michael. Nice work. Nice work indeed. Three rounds to go before we give away our second prize of the week. Our next round is going to be... It's all in the name. The answers in this round are in the letters of your names. OK, fingers on buzzers, please, everyone. The first two, the answers will be somewhere amongst the letters of Glenn Moore. Glenn, you'll get two points if you get one of these, one point for anyone else. Okay. So you always get two points if it's your name. So your first question is this. Space in front of plane seats where passengers can stretch out their lower limbs. Glenn. Legroom. Two points to Glenn. Oh, Very nice. Good. Next one. Fruit with varieties including cantaloupe and honeydew. That is Kate. Melon. Melon is absolutely right as well. They call him the, the leg rim melon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good title for your next yeah. tour, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and Michael, the next two questions are in the letters of Michael Burke. Here's your first one. Pianist played by Michael Douglas in the film Behind the Candelabra. Glenn. Uh, Liberace. Liberace, Michael is in your name. How about that, Liberace? <laughs> Next one. Rich white sauce used in a traditional lasagna recipe. Uh, that is Glenn. Bechamel. Bechamel? They call him the Bechamel Liberace. <laughs> Burke. Tanya, the next two are in the letters of your name. OK. Tanya Moore. Surname of the footballer Wayne, who scored 53 senior goals for England. That is Tanya. Rooney. Rooney is correct. Two points to Tanya. Next one. Bird of the rail family with a red and yellow beak often seen on ponds and lakes in the UK. Glenn. Uh, I, I, I've... Uh, Buzzed in too quick. Buzzed in too something quick, something sorry. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Yes, Kate. Moorhen. Moorhen? It is Moorhen. Nice. Oh. Kate, the last two questions are the letters of Kate Humble. Title character played by Gina Davis in a 1991 film opposite Susan Sarandon as Louise. Glenn. Thelma. Thelma? Correct, Thelma and Louise. Props, man. That was good. And final question in this round. Two points for Kate, one for anyone else. Singer, who was the daughter of Nana Cherry and who had UK top ten hits with Don't Call Me Up and Mad Love. Oh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Nobody. Mabel is who I was looking oh. for. Oh. The round ends there. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. I don't think oh. Michael's in the lead anymore. No. Sorry, That's Nina. Tanya, you've got three points. Kate, Come on. you've got four. Michael with six. Glenn Moore has a four-point lead. Mm. Ten points. <laughs> this is what happened yesterday. Two rounds to go. Two rounds before we give away another prize. Our round four today looks like this. Where is Kazakhstan? If you take your tablets out, please. I will show you a map. We know how this one works. I will need you to find various <laughs> things on that map. Today's map is Europe. And the first thing I'd like you to find is this. Emperor Hadrian's Villa, which was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. Where is Emperor Hadrian's Villa? Glenn, what were you thinking here? I'm thinking of it, if it's Hadrian of Wall fame, yes. then I'm, I, I'm worried it's going to be somewhere like Kent because there are so many of those sort of sites in that sort of gotcha. area. Uh, but I, I'm hoping it's near Hadrian's Wall, okay. which is northeast of England. OK, so let's see where you've gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have sort of Hadrian's Wall-ish there. Michael, what are you thinking? Well, it's the, it's the wall guy, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, obviously. Um, so, I mean... It, his villa would be outside Rome, wouldn't it? I mean, he's a Roman emperor, uh, but you wouldn't ask the question if it was Rome. No, so I've gone for just generally 
in, yeah, Brit gone, in gone, Britannia. You gone for, yeah, Britannia. Yeah, Notting Hill. You gone for London? Yeah, Notting Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Tanya, what were you thinking here? I went on the edge because I thought that's where Villa would be. You want to have it by the sea. By the sea. Exactly. And I just put it right there. North France. Do you say? North of Paris and Kate, what were you thinking? Well, so I was thinking Hadrian's Wall. Oh, it's obviously somewhere near the wall. And I thought, hang on, it's a World Heritage Site mm. and I've never heard of it. Mm. Um, and you spend a lot of time in the British countryside, genuinely, don't you? Always I do, and, and I walk quite a lot. And yeah. uh, and I've never heard of, mm. of Hadrian's Villa, although I have heard of Hadrian's Wall. So I think it's probably, if I was an emperor and had a villa, I would probably stick in the centre of my empire, which would be Italy. So I've oh. kept him in Italy. Mm, OK, Very well, in good. Italy. No. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? The question setters are essentially saying, are you going to take a risk that Hadrian's villa is near Hadrian's wall? Yeah. Or yeah. would it be outside Rome where you'd expect it to be? Mm. And I tell you, one of those two assumptions is right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, who have our question setters done a number on? Where is Hadrian's villa? Oh, oh, Italy. oh my God! Well, that's Rome, brilliant. And it's absolutely right. Very well played, Kate. Point to you. Excellent. Yeah, Tivoli, just outside Rome, is where you find Hadrian's villa. Uh, the next one looks like this: the birthplace of former Manchester United player and manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Where is that, please? Also famous for his wall in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a range of knowledge we're testing at least, isn't it? Michael, any comments? Uh, I, I know nothing about football. Uh, I, I mean, he's obviously, I, I imagine he's Scandinavian. I, I would think he's either Danish or Swedish. I've opted for Swedish, so I've stuck across somewhere in the middle of Sweden. Okay, let's see where you are. Yep, middle of Sweden, absolutely. Tanya, what was your thinking? Um, my thinking was move it away from its original place and press lock in. Lovely. Just in the sea. On this one, I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to take a nice guess. Yeah, you're in, you're in Czechia. OK. What was the Czech Republic? Kate, your thoughts? So it does look like... Uh, a Scandinavian name, I thought possibly Swedish, and so again, like Michael, put my cross vaguely in Sweden. Yep, absolutely. Not far from Stockholm there. And Glenn, what are you thinking? I know he's Norwegian, and I've assumed <laughs> as a result he's born in Norway, and I sort of went for one of the more populated areas, sort of Oslo sort of ends, so I've gone okay. for South Norway. You are, yeah, kind of Oslo-ish there, absolutely. Yeah, he is Norwegian. Doesn't uh. mean you got the point, because if he's at the top of Norway, then mm. it's going to look good for Michael. So, where was Oli Gunnar Solskjaer born? Wow. I mean... Trondheim? That's Bergen. very, very close. Yeah. He's born in uh, Bergen. Christiansund Bergen. Uh, Christiansund. in Norway. I'm going to give Michael and Glenn both a point there because you are equidistant. Yes. Equidistant. Very well done if you were close to that at home. Last thing I'd like you to find is this. The patent office where Albert Einstein worked from 1902 to 1909, please. Where was that? Before he went all sciencey. He was a patent officer, but where? I think this might be a hit and hope. Tanya, what, what are you thinking? I went down. Yeah. I have no clue where Albert Einstein worked before he became Albert Einstein. Pre-Einstein. Let's yeah. see where you are. Near Barcelona, I would say that is. Kate, any thoughts here? I took a wild guess and sort of went northern Germany. That would make some sort of logical sense. You are North Germany. Glenn, we were in Spain and we are in Germany. Uh, similar wild guess, slap bang in the middle of Germany. Slap bang in the middle of Germany. Absolutely. And Michael? Um... I've, got, I've got some sort of memory that, that it might have been somewhere in Austria or Switzerland, so I, I generally... So you've gone a little bit further dabbed, down. sort of Vienna-ish. You are in Austria there. Mm. Now, what do you think at home? Do you know the answer to this one? Let's find out, shall we? Where was the patent office where Albert Einstein worked from 1902 to 1909? Who scored the final point of the round? Ooh. The Ooh. ink thing was absolutely right. Um, I Switzerland <laughs> in Bern. Final point of the round goes to Michael. One round to go. That is uh, answer smash, as we know. And let's, let's take it. a look at our leaderboard before we go into it. Tanya with three, Kate with five, Michael with eight, Glenn, three point lead, 11 points. Chance <laughs> for Michael. He had a five point lead yesterday and absolutely smashed answer smash, but a three point lead today. Who knows? Should we play it? Yeah. <laughs> 
Being good on buzzers, please. Point for a correct answer, point off for an incorrect answer. Your first category today is... Pots. Hmm. It's pretty high-octane stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> pots will be the pictures. But which pots? Which vegetable comes before ear in the name of a condition common in rugby players and boxers? Yes, Glenn. Cauliflower pot. Cauliflower pots? It is cauliflower, flower pot, cauliflower pot. Next clue, next picture. Which martial art made its Olympic debut at Tokyo 2020? Yes, Glenn. Tai Chi pot. Is it Tai Chi pot? It is not. You lose a point. Michael. Karate pot. Karate pot, we were looking for, yeah. Karate and yeah. teapot. Karate pot. Next category. Hollywood actors are our pick. You preferred pots, didn't you, Michael? <laughs> I did. In 2017, Emmanuel Macron became a world leader when he was elected to what position? Glenn. President of Francis McDormand. Is it President of Francis McDormand? <laughs> it is. It is. Well done, President of France. And Francis McDormand. The President of Francis McDormand. That's a job. <laughs> next clue, next picture. What four words come before there's a way in a phrase suggesting that determination will help you achieve what you want? Yes, Glenn. Where there's a Will Smith. Where there's a Will Smith? It is. Well done. Where there's a Will Smith. Next one. On TV, who played Sam Seaborn in The West Wing and Chris Traeger in Parks and Recreation? Glenn. Rob Lowe and Wilson. Rob Lowe and Wilson? It is Rob Lowe, Owen Wilson, Rob Lowe and Wilson. I don't think we have any more, do we? We do not have any more. So Glenn won on Monday. He got his redemption. Of course he's won again today. He was leading going into it. Um, he absolutely smashed that round as well. Glenn Moore wins for a second time. Well played, Glenn. Michael in second there. Glenn, you've won another prize. You're the Sean Williamson of this week. Yeah. Um, which prize would you like? Oh, man, this is difficult. Yeah. The dartboard's more of a statement and yes. the thermos is more practical. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so the question really is, what sort of man are you, Glenn? <laughs> Can I go for dartboard, please? Dartboard, <laughs> whoa, we see what sort of man you are. A statement man. Uh, let's take a look at our weekly leaderboard, shall we? Glenn at the top of it, of course. Glenn there with eight, Michael six, Kate five, and Tanya two. We have three days to go there. We have double points Friday coming up as well, but he is going to be tough to catch, I would say. Two very mm -hmm. dominant performances in a row. Mm. Uh, let's see if tomorrow if we can uh, get a different name on that leaderboard. You never, ever know. Um, should we do it again tomorrow? Look yes, forward please. to it ever so much. Look forward to seeing you as well on the House of Games. The fondue set was smaller than I thought. This is absolutely massive. It's really heavy. <laughs> Are you beginning to wish you'd gone for uh, the thermos? No, I might play floor darts and drop them from the <laughs> That's a good top story yeah. window. Oh, yeah, you're not going to be able to hang that up anywhere. No. But you've got plaster walls, no. <laughs>